Hey, what's up everyone? April Dunham here. In this video, I wanted to go back to the basics and build off of my how to get started with Power Apps video. In that video, I walked you through how to get a development environment set up for Power Apps and get the right subscriptions. But for this video, I want to take it a step back and talk at a high level what Power Apps is and explain the differences between the different types of Power Apps that you can create. So this should be great for those brand new to Power Apps looking to understand the platform as a whole and what it can do for you and how to choose which type of app when based on your scenario. So we'll talk through all this coming up, but first, here's the intro. So to start out, I want to do a high level overview of what Power Apps is for those that are just starting out. Power Apps is part of Microsoft's Power Platform suite of tools. This is a low code platform that's part of Microsoft 365 and spans across Microsoft 365, Azure, and Dynamics. And there are four main components to this Power Platform. One is Power BI, which is a low code dashboard analytics and reporting tool. One is Power Apps, which I'm talking with you all about today in this video, which is a low-code rapid application development tool. Then you have Power Automate, which used to be known as Flow. So if you're familiar with Microsoft Flow, Power Automate is the name for that. And that's the workflow and business process automation piece of this suite of tools. And then you have Power Virtual Agents, which is the newest piece of the tools, and that allows you to build low-code chatbots. And when we talk about low-code tools, what we mean there are traditionally to build some kind of software or business process, you would have to have a developer build that in some kind of programming language. What low code tools are trying to do is bridge that gap and bring the ability to create applications and reports and workflows to people with point and click type interfaces rather than having to do a lot of heavy custom code. So that's where the Power Apps piece comes into play. If you need to build a desktop or mobile or tablet application for your business, you could do that with Power Apps using the Power Apps editor, which allows you to drag and drop controls onto the screen and use Excel-like formulas to build out your logic layer. And you can integrate that easily with things called connectors which allow you to connect to different services such as Microsoft 365, SharePoint Teams, OneDrive, Dynamics, and then services outside of Microsoft 365, which there are over 325 different connectors at this point, which keeps growing every day of services that you can connect to. You can also build your own custom connectors so that you can bring in data from other services. So this could be data from your on-prem behind the firewall type scenarios. It could be data from services that you have that you're using at your business that have like an API that we can call. You can create custom connectors and call and pull data from that within your Power Apps also without having to write any complex code. So when we're talking about Power Apps, you need to understand the three main different types of Power Apps that you can create. One type is called a Canvas app. And if you watch some of my videos, most of the videos that I'm showing, I'm demoing Canvas apps. With these Canvas apps, they give you complete control over the user interface of the application that you're building. So as the name implies, it literally gives you a blank canvas. You can drag and drop the controls and build out the application pixel to pixel, just how you want it, and you add in your data sources. So you determine what data from where you want to use and consume within that application. And these Canvas apps are typically internal tenant facing. So they're typically intended to be applications that you're building to help your organization, not necessarily an app that you would go and put on a website and share with customers to consume. Now that's not to say that you can't share with external users. There are some capabilities where you can use Azure B2C to share with a user in a different tenant, but that requires some additional configuration and you have the whole licensing concept that you have to consider as well because Power Apps does require some licensing. So the users that are external would have to somehow carry over a license or you would have to license them up. So typically when people are using 
Power Apps, Canvas apps, they're mostly using those within their internal organization. The other type of app that we have is called a model-driven app. With these type of apps, you don't have complete control over the UI like you would in a Canvas app. It gives you a standard template that you can only slightly tweak. So the difference between this is you don't get a blank canvas, you start with your data first. These model-driven apps are tied to something called the Common Data Service, which in layman terms is a data repository and solutions mechanism specifically for the Power Platform. Now the model-driven apps are built on top of this and use that Common Data Service data so what you do instead is you tie it to that. You say, I want an application that uses data from the accounts and the contacts and the task entities, and then it will build that app for you. And an entity in the common data service is the same as a table in the SQL database or a list in a SharePoint site. Just like Canvas apps, these model-driven apps are typically internal tenant facing as well, but you can share those out with external customers as long as you have the right licensing and the setup. And then the final type of Power App that we can create is called a Power Apps portal. So these portals are also tied to the common data service and would use and consume data from those common data service entities, but the scope of this is intended to be more public facing. So a portal is almost like a lightweight website that you can build, that you can have anonymous users interact with and read write data back and forth between your common data service database. Now that we understand the three main types of Power Apps that we can create, let's dive in and take a look at the difference visually and from the user experience between the three. So to get to Power Apps, you can log into Office 365 and get to it from the shortcut or you can get to it directly by going to make.powerapps.com. When you get there, you'll be taken to this landing page and you'll see those three main options that align to the three types of Power Apps we just discussed. Let's take a look at the Canvas app from blank option first. So we can see what building a new Canvas app looks like. So an important thing to know about Canvas apps when you're using them is they aren't responsive out of the box. Meaning, if you build a Canvas app, it's not going to automatically change the proportions of it to be optimized exactly for a desktop, tablet, or mobile device. Now, that's not to say that these won't work on those devices. They just won't be optimized for that. So that's why when we go and create a new Canvas app from blank, you'll see an option there for format. And you'll see two options, one for tablet and one for phone. Now we don't have one for desktop here because the tablet one covers both of those, both if it's a tablet or a desktop optimized application. So it's really important when you're thinking about building an application that you consider your audience and where and on what devices are going to be using this primarily. And it's important because once you select one of these, it's not really simple to change the device format after the fact. It technically can be done, and there are some videos out there and blog posts that show you workarounds that you can do, but especially for a beginner, it's not very easy, so it's best to just start off knowing which device you're trying to target this application for. Let's start with a tablet scenario and just walk through exploring the interface for building a Canvas-based application. So we'll just give our app a name, select the format, and click Create. And you'll see here why they call this a Canvas app. We have a blank canvas, we have no controls on here. We don't have any data source relationships. So that's up to us to define. And hopefully what you're seeing is, this looks very similar to some of the other Office programs, particularly PowerPoint, that you might be used to using. You have the ribbon up here, you can go and you can insert shapes and labels and text inputs and all of that like you can in PowerPoint. So that's why I like to say when I describe Power Apps to people, it's like if PowerPoint and Excel had a baby and that would be Power Apps. So you get why I'm getting the PowerPoint reference just by looking at the design editor experience, but the Excel reference is for how you actually implement the logic layer in your Power Apps applications. So the logic to do things like write data to your data source or format data and all of that is very similar to Excel formulas. In fact, it's really based off of that. So if you're an Excel guru and familiar with formulas for concatenation, 
look up, things like that. Those are the same type of formulas that we can utilize in Power Apps to do the logic. So I'll just explore the interface here. We can come in and we can add things like labels, buttons, and we have all kinds of inputs here. So things you would expect like drop downs, list boxes, date pickers, radio buttons, and then some more advanced things like pin inputs. So you can have electronic signatures. And in the media section, we see that we can upload images in here. We can even have audio and video. There's a barcode scanning functionality. So it's really simple to kind of explore this insert tab to see the type of controls that we're able to add into our Power Apps. We have charts where you can embed Power BI tiles in here and icons as well. So it's just a matter of finding the controls you want on here and then adding them in and dragging and dropping them into the position that they should be. So that's just a high level overview of the Canvas app maker experience. So now let's contrast this and compare it to the experience of building a new model driven app. So for model driven, if from the Power Apps home screen, we select model driven app from blank, you'll see we're taken to a screen that looks a bit different where we need to give our app a name and click done to take us to the edit screen. And when we do, you'll see the experience is vastly different. So rather than having that blank canvas to drop controls onto and add different data sources into, instead we have this interface where we're telling it what entities to map to so that it will build the interface for us. So you see, for example, we have different properties to configure like a site map, the dashboards, business process flows, which are just a workflow for model-driven apps. And the entity view here are the data sources from the common data service that you're going to be using and consuming in this app. So if you wanted to add an additional entity in here, you can select this entity option and it will list out all the entities and you can just click the checkbox next to it. And that adds that here into the editor. And you can see that each of these entities, if you're not familiar with the common data service, have their own different set of properties or things that you can configure. So you can configure the forms for it. So if you do come from a SharePoint background like myself, you know that we have the new, the edit, and the view form. We have those type of forms as well for the common data service entities. We have views similar to like how we have those in SharePoint list and libraries. And then you also have charts and dashboards. So really to configure a basic app where we can manage, add new records in, see the records that are in there for these three different entities, all we had to do was drag the entities here onto this and we can save, publish this and click play to run it. So you see we have the account entity shown here. So this is the view surfacing up of the list of items in here. I have a new option, so it has it's fully baked in the new form control for me. I didn't have to do anything rather than point it to the entity. And I can add in new information here and click save, and then see that data here in the view for the entity. So that's the thing with these model-driven apps though. It did a lot of the work for me, but I don't have any control over the look of this really. It's gonna give me the standard template with the left navigation. I can control what shows here, um, the values and the groupings and all of that, but I can't control really anything else. So that is the limitation, but with that limitation, you're gaining uh, responsiveness. So as I said earlier with Canvas apps, you have to choose if you're optimizing it for tablet or phone, with these model-driven apps, since the layout is really rigid, they're responsive out of the box. So if I were to pull this up on a phone or a tablet or a desktop, it would respond accordingly and look correct. And that leads us to the final type of app then that we wanna look at, and that's a portal. So if we select portal from blank, you see we need to give it a name and also an address. Since this is a website, it needs to go and check and make sure that that URL is available. And then we'll just click create to provision this new Power Apps portal. And when it's done provisioning to see all the apps that you've created with Power Apps, you can go to the apps tab and you can filter and sort this by type. So this is where you can determine, is this a Canvas app, a model driven or a portal? So I can see the new portal that I've created here. And I can put this in edit mode so I can see how the experience differs between the Canvas model and this portal. So again, vastly different since this is a website basically that we're creating. So with these portals, you have pages, and then you have different components, so layouts. So in a way, kind of similar if you've ever used WordPress or any other kind of 
website building tool. You have some of that similar functionality where you add your different pages to your website, the different kinds of layouts, if this is gonna be a one, two, three column, and then the components of that. So you might have some text, you might have a form, a list of items, maybe a nice dashboard or something like that. You just add all of the components that you want in here into the different pages and build them out. All right, so I've walked through and shown you each of the three different types of Power Apps that you can create. One other thing that I'll mention, it's not really a fourth type, but more of a different way that you can create a Canvas app. And that's with the SharePoint integration. So another thing when you're building Power Apps, if you're using it with SharePoint specifically, that you can do is you can customize your SharePoint list or libraries with Power Apps. So for example, I can go into my time off request SharePoint list and you'll see a Power Apps button and you'll have an option for customized forms. So what this is doing, if you happen to come from a SharePoint background and have used InfoPath in the past, you know that we had the option to customize a SharePoint list form with InfoPath. So this is replacing that, but allowing you to customize it with Power Apps. So this is a Canvas based application but tied directly to a SharePoint list form. So to kind of summarize what we just learned here, if you want to build a mobile or desktop based application or tablet app that you have complete control over the UI and you want to connect to various different data sources, then a Canvas app is the way to go. If you want to connect to data from the common data service, and have a out of the box responsive application and aren't too concerned with being able to control the UI and, and just need the ability to view data and add new items, then model driven apps are the way to go. And lastly, if you need an external facing website that can connect to the common data service, then a Power Apps portal is your choice. Just some examples in case you haven't caught any of my other videos of ways that Canvas apps can be designed. So this is an example of a Canvas app intended to be used on a mobile device. So you can see just how much you can customize these Canvas apps here and have complete control over that UI. So this still comes up here on my desktop fine. It's just really narrow because it's in portrait mode optimized for the phone. And this is an example of a Canvas app that has been optimized for a tablet or a desktop. So you can see it takes up much more of the screen real estate. So hopefully you understand the differences between the three main types of Power Apps and how to create them and when and where you might use them. If you found this helpful, please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll catch you in the next video.